series. The first one is Optimizing Student Manager 8 Searches, and Matthew is going to work for us through this today. Matthew, are you there? Are you ready? I'm ready. All righty. The screen is yours. Take it away. We've promised people we'll be done in under 30 minutes today. Oh, uh, we'll try. Um, okay. The 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 whole idea behind the the um, well this webinar, but but the the new search screens was that we needed to make Student Manager 8 SQL Server compatible. And we knew we couldn't do that with the old search screens. So we looked at replacing them, coming in, and, and just kind of just starting from scratch. I had looked over a few other ideas online uh, to, to do this. Um, and as we've moved along, since 8 has been released, we found a few hitches here and there that we've, we've had to work around. But there are quite a few features uh, in in the search. Um, so we're, we're highlighting all of these, or well, not all of these features, but quite a few of these features uh, today. We're going to start with a, a couple of preferences and settings that you may not be aware of, uh, and, and we'll start with those. And we'll look at how those um, play in, in searching for names and how they play in searching for courses and pretty much everything else in, in Student Manager, when you're pulling up a find screen, uh, it uses the same base search screen. So it, it, um, it does, does a lot. So uh, and then note here about to begin with or not to begin with in doing searches. Uh, we'll talk about what that means uh, later on. And so on, on the preferences screen, there is a autocomplete now with searching. Um, um, this is the little, well, I'll show you here in a minute, but it's, it's, it's kind of a history, if you will, of what you've searched for recently, or not necessarily recently. There's several options in this dropdown. Um, also here, while we're on the preferences screen, I uh, want to highlight that there's this disable first word auto search. And I'll talk more about what that does uh, here in a little bit. So um, uh, we'll, we'll kind of sh we'll, we'll go through here um, doing some of this. So the auto complete, first of all, uh, this is the, the drop, well, not really a drop, down box, but just kind of a box that opens up underneath the uh, main search screen, and it shows you your history or a little bit of history of what you've searched for um, in the past. Now, with I promised, there's several options here. So if I go into Edit Preferences, I have mine set to Most Frequent, so it's going to show me a list of what I most frequently type in. Um, especially, well, in testing, it seems like I'm always pulling up the same course or I'm always pulling up the same name to test with. So you'll, you'll see that in my search history as I start playing with things. Uh, other choices are you can turn it off, and there is a benefit to doing that, and I'll discuss that here in a minute. You can have it in alpha order. So what you what you most search for, and it's in alphabetical order. Uh, I just talked about most frequent. Most recent is so the last several things that you've done. And I think this, this keeps, it shows 15 items. And as you start typing, it, it tries to keep uh, the list to what you're typing. So if you're typing in SM for Smith, uh, or SMI for Smith, it, it shows you all the different choices starting with SMI. And I, I don't know if this screenshot is on most recent or most frequent, but here are several of the items that popped up when starting to type in SMI. Okay, so with, with it 
turned off, the benefit is that you can see all the data in the column underneath. If I go back to the previous screen here, so you see that the last name has been covered up uh, with the, the uh, history box. So by turning it off, we now can see those last names uh, in full. So there's the benefit of having it turned off. Um, me, I personally don't care that some of that's hidden. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I like having that history or the, you know, the most frequent items coming up and shown to me. So that's why we made it a preference. You guys can set it to what you want it to be and, and we can go off of there. Now, even if you have it off, it's still kind of collecting some of that data behind the scenes for you. So if there is one day you want to turn it back on um, and do one of those other searches, it is going to kind of remember and have that stuff uh, filled in for you. So maybe if you want to temporarily turn it off and then turn it back on, uh, you've got that stuff still being collected for you. Uh, the next thing is the disable first word auto search. What this originally was intended for, and I want to pull this up from the course screen, is when you start typing here in the box, and I currently have my setting to where the, the, the first word auto search is enabled. When you start typing, it's a key by key. As you type, it is filtering out the results. Well, when you disable the first word auto search, let me get out of here, it no longer is doing that key by key on the first word. So I can type in art. It hasn't filtered my list. Now I can hit the, the search or this magnifying glass that now shows up here. Or if I start typing a second word, let's say joy, uh, so I've got some art classes that have a J for joy uh, in the title. So it's, it's, it's looking across several fields here um, when it does that. So that um, the, um, but anyway, the, the starting to type a second word does automatically start doing the, uh, the, the search. So I don't have to click on the magnifying glass. Now, while I'm here and talking about it, typing multiple words does fire multiple searches. And in, in that, it's looking at art in, in any of these columns that are kind of this maroon color, and even the ones we don't see over here to the right, begin date and, and things like subject, alias. Um, these are all being searched through. When you start typing a second word, it's doing a second search and combining it with the first. So it not only has to have art somewhere in there, but it also has to have a J somewhere in one of these columns. And it doesn't matter which one. Um, and, and well, and actually... Be characters like the plus sign or anything, Matthew? What's that? You don't have to add any Boolean characters like the plus sign or the minus sign or the quote marks or anything like you do in Google. You can nope. just type. Just start typing a second word. Thank you. Um, and that's kind of that's not on my list of things to show today, but we're going to show it anyway. Now, the second thing that the first disable first word auto search does is that on name lookups, I do have it turned off, okay. On name lookups, it brings you to a blank search screen. We've, we've found that most of you guys have more names than anything else in your database. So pulling up the names and showing all the names in the search box was a bit cumbersome. So we decided to, to this disable first word auto search also turns it off 
from automatically showing the names when you first come in here. Now I can start uh, uh, typing HAV and then do my magnifying glass to search. Well, I've only got one name that has HAV in it, and that's Charles Havlicek. So that finds my, my record. And then I can start, um, if I have a different one, say more common name, Smith, search. I have a couple here. Again, if I start typing a second word, S-A-M, it finds me Sam Smith. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and hopefully it speeds things up for you guys that do have large uh, names tables and, and need to quickly search for, for a name. Um, Back to my slideshow. Where did it go? My slideshow died. Oh dear. I don't know how that happened. Sorry about this, guys. Get back here. Search history off. Disable first word auto search. Okay, so I've kind of just talked about this instead of showing you this. So. Hopefully that makes it faster. I have heard where it actually wasn't faster for people to have the disable first word auto search, even though their names table was huge. So that um, just kind of play with that setting a little bit and to see if it does help you out or not. Uh, to begin with or not to begin with. And this is the uh, search fields on a begin with basis. And this is your default. And, and it does remember from one search to the next search, whether you have this checked or not. So um, by default, it has it set to search by a begins with basis. Usually that is faster because in Visual Fox Pro, there's a lot of optimizations done on searching at the beginning of a string as opposed to anywhere in the string. Um, now, if you do turn that off, now let's do course. If I turn that off and start searching for art, and I still have this. So it's got, it's pulling in anywhere in my course title it has an art, uh, unless it's in one of these other fields, and this first one does not have it in alias or subject or anywhere else except for my donation of the 15, 2015 Aceware Fine Arts donation course. So it, it's finding it in the middle of the title, but if I do a search with search fields on a begins with basis um, and do that again, now it's, it's looking only for ones that have art at the very beginning of the title or it's a subject. All of these happen to have a subject of art, but um, if I wanted to do a common word like the, so now we've got course uh, course titles that begin with the, and it looks like that's the only place it's finding it. Notice that it is highlighting where it is finding the word and, and showing it to you. Now if I turn off the search by begins with basis and fire the search, now it's looking anywhere, it's finding it in all these course titles somewhere in the name, exploring the iPad, using the Kindle, um, beyond the basics. You know, it, it's finding it anywhere. Maybe if you are looking for, um, you thought the course title began with art, but when you do a search by begins with basis, you're not finding the right course. Well, actually, that's a bad example because it pulled it up anyway. But actually, the course began with the 19th century course, or the 19th century art, literature, and music in the Revolutionary Age. But because the subject code also had art, it's pulling it up anyway. Maybe you won't get as lucky as I did here 
in in trying to find a course um, in in that way. So switching it to a a contained search to to find those things that you're you're sure the course had art somewhere in the title, then you can hopefully find it that way. And hopefully it's 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 fast for you. Uh, we have found that that some places that are, have the slower networks doing the the contained search is slower. So again, this is another setting to play with. See if it is slower or faster for, on your network or not. And uh, hopefully you can use those to your advantage. Um, there is one area I want to say off the register screen, maybe in grouping or something like that, where you do not have the ability to switch between begins with and contains. Uh, we were finding a problem on the um, begins with case in there in that place, so it just does a contain search for you in there. But uh, I think it's it's easier just to find when you pull up the screen and the and grouping a registration. It's it's you're probably just going to be flipping through the screen anyway to find your your grouping and uh, and get your get the right people together or right registrations together. Um, let's see what else we got here. I think fairly obvious. You, most searches you're going to want this checked because of the Fox Pro. Um, um, typically, it is faster with the Fox Pro database. Now, when we get to SQL Server, from what we've seen so far, uh, begins with and contains are about as fast, at least in our testing so far. So we haven't. We haven't really done anything with the begins with basis on SQL Server yet, and we may not need to, but we'll see how things go. Uh, change on the fly. I kind of showed this a little bit, although I didn't. I had the uh, disable first word auto search. Um, you can, if I'm doing, if I don't disable the first word auto search, and start doing art on a begins with basis. Once I uncheck this, I thought it did a, doesn't it research right away? It's, something's not happy. I had to double click just to get it check marked. Something, hmm. it used to, Right when you check marked and uncheck marked it, it used to just automatically search right then and there, but it's not for some reason on my machine. The law of the programmer giving a webinar is that there is something going to break during the course of the webinar. That is a given fact. So this is the one thing that is broken for me today that was working earlier. Um, so I'll have to work. And you'll work tomorrow without any change in anything at all. Exactly. So <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be scratching my head as soon as we get off the webinar trying to figure out what's wrong, and then it'll actually just start working on me for me. Um, also, part of it is I am doing a test build in showing the webinar, so I I could be I could have something in this test build that's funky as opposed to what's actually being po been posted on the web and you guys are getting, um, it could just work just fine for you guys, at least I hope. But anyway, unchecking and checkmarking this is supposed to refire the search for you and, and get you the proper results as far as begins with and contains. So um, we will go to the next screen on the slide. Um, yeah, so turn it off anytime you want to when you need to. Uh, resizing the window. The search screen 
is built so that when you resize it and then close and come back in, it remembers the size and recenters it for you. Also, if, if you maximize it, well, it no longer is going to center it for you because, hey, when it's this big, it doesn't need centered. But it is going to remember that you maximized it, so it's going to just park it right dab in the middle anyway because it's the maximum size. So uh, whether you want it a bigger search screen like this or have it a nice, tiny, tight window, something like this, it's going to remember it for you the next time and you're going to and you'll see it that way. If I make this a little tinier this way and then fine. Yeah, that's still too big for it to not auto center. There's a, there's a kind of a a point where it quits auto centering it and all automatically just parks it in the upper left hand corner. So you have to kind of play with the size a little bit if you do have it kind of, you know, a little smaller but not quite full screen. So um, I think that's everything. No. So stretch it left and right if you want to see that. Uh, also, a couple other features with this. In, in You can rearrange columns if you're wanting to see. Maybe I want to see time over here next to this. Um, you can rearrange columns. Now, unfortunately, it will not remember that you moved time over here before the title. It's just, yeah, it, it that would be too much for it to remember. It would have a heart attack, I'm sure, all the time if we tried to program that in. Um, also with this, you notice when you first pull up the, well, in this case, the course screen, but any other screen, the first column is what it automatically sorts by. And you can see that the down arrow is on here. If you click a uh, field that's already sorted a second time, it does a reverse sort. So it does it from, you know, well, and you can't really tell, but if I go over here to course title, one, two, three is my first course, goes on down to arts, you know, down the list through the B's, C's, and whatever. Click again. Now I'm up at the top with um, character with Microsoft characters. Lowercase letters come after uppercase characters, so that's why you're seeing using the Kindle coming after D and ASD courses here, which were some dummy test courses that I did at some point. But anyway, uh, for the most part, it should be in alphabetical order as long as you realize that lowercase comes later. Um, I don't remember if there was anything. But yeah, any column in here can you can sort and reverse sort. And I could click it a third time and it does the, the regular sort the regular way. So any column you can sort data by if you're just scrolling through. Uh, and you could still start searching. Let's do croquet. Start searching, and it still fir filters and keeps it in that proper sort order. Or reverse, and I could still keep typing. And it's bringing up just my intermediate crochet and beginning crochet courses in reverse course title order because that's the way I want to sort it. So I think that's, um, yeah, the PowerPoint slide says like Excel, but you know, probably shouldn't make too many comparisons to other products like that. Um, so I think at this point, is there anything else you want to see with the search or any questions popping up that I can answer for you? questions for you that have come up. And okay. if you have any questions, now is the time to type them in the question box. Uh, first question, which preference screen were you on when you selected the um, 
it's the main system tab. Yeah, so when I first go into preferences, it's the main system tab. Okay. And folks wanting to know if the search options are available in all versions of Student Manager 8. And I don't think so. I think they're... Um, most most of these have been in since the beginning of eight, but yeah, like I've said, we've we, as we've been going along and tweaking. I think the first slide said uh, eight point zero point zero two zero and newer for some of these features. Um, I think that's when the disable first word auto search came in somewhere around there. So yeah, get with your tech if you need updated to the latest version. Uh, to get some of these features. Okay, and Victoria is asking something a little bit outside the norm, but I'm going to go ahead and let her get away with it this time. Uh, how can we make the font bigger? Right now, you can't. And I've been playing. I've been playing with a f uh, feature to automatically make it bigger, and it hasn't been working yet. So um, it's still one of those things that's kind of on the back burner at the moment, but I'm hoping eventually, someday, I'll figure out a way to get the font bigger and have you guys choose what font you want. But right now, unfortunately, I haven't gotten anything to work right, so sorry about that. That's all right. I think that's about all for now. Okay. What's what's okay. the webinar next week? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make myself the presenter so that I can come back into my own PowerPoint, if you don't mind. And our power okay. our okay. presentation for next week is on July 8th, and it's setting up your favorite reports button. And Matthew, I think you're doing this one for us as well. Maybe uh, if I time. am, I haven't been told yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm coming. I'm coming back in two weeks for the uh, SMS messaging, but uh, then maybe um, Chuck is doing next week. So July 8th, same time, same registration. So um, we're, you don't have to do anything different. You'll get a reminder. You use that to log in, just like you did today. And if we're all done, and I think we are, mm -hmm. then happy Fourth of July, everybody. <laughs> Have a good one. Thanks for joining us. And we are under our 30 minutes, just barely, yes. by about 28 seconds. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.